Yo, what's up? It was requested countless times that I explain how to counter the most oppressive, most annoying weapons and strategies in the game, like flamethrowers, sniping, paratroopers dropping behind your back, and so on. Now is the perfect moment for that. Let's dive in. And we start with the newest addition to the game, the paratroopers. These dudes seem very annoying and oppressive because they can spawn basically everywhere, even behind your own lines. And they're, they're coming so quickly that you can't really do much about it in most situations. So here's how you counter them. First of all, you can, if you're medium distance away, just bolt action them down while they're, <laughs> while they're trying to land on the ground. Usually you will only be able to shoot down one, two or three of them, but this is already good enough. This is already good enough to shoot them down this way. And... A power trooper squad of 6 soldiers landing can do some damage. But power troopers with only 3 people, even if you don't find the remaining 3 soldiers, aren't that strong enough. If, you, if they are much closer to you and you have a flamethrower, this is even better because then you can easily kill all of them with your flamethrower while they're dropping down. Which is also dealing some mental damage to the player using the power troopers. So yeah, this is even better. Another thing is grenades, preferably grenade launchers, because if the power troopers drop down most of, most of the time, they will come close together on the ground. One or two grenade launcher shots should kill all of them easily. Same thing goes for grenades, especially fragmentation grenades. They can kill them, though it's a bit harder to, per to time them perfectly. But still, impact grenades also okay for that. Molotovs on the ground while they're landing can also be good. Because when they contact the ground, they, they, they will take a while to keep to start moving. And if they take too much damage from landing and get down, they will automatically die in the Molotov fire. So yeah, that's also fine, though not as effective as just a normal grenade. And the absolutely best strategy to become basically immune against power troopers is that you have you want to have, and this is a common counterplay to almost every single strategy, you want to have as many rally points as possible spread out. Because power troopers dropping behind your lines if you're a defender and starting to cap the objective is very well. If your team is a complete bunch of noobs and there's no one defending but just running around somewhere on the map where they're completely useless, yeah, this can be dangerous. But under any normal circumstance, they can't, six men can't be so extremely dangerous while capping. Yeah. Even one or two squads of your own team defending will make these power troopers much less effective. So the biggest danger that actually comes from power troopers dropping behind your lines is when they sweep your rally points. And this is how you also want to play power troopers for maximum efficiency. You want to be very fast, drop behind enemy lines, destroy all of their rallies or as many as you can find. Possibly even destroy some random vehicles or entertain guns that are hiding or heavy machine gun nests. And then quickly get to action and to flank the enemies to kill as many as possible and even capture the objective. If you have many rally points spread out, this strategy won't work anymore because, well, even if they destroy one or two, you still have three around. So this is the main danger coming from power troopers. If they destroy your logistics, as was also in real life, power troopers very often had to carry out sabotage missions. Because, well, power troopers aren't that strong when it comes to fighting. They're not many soldiers. But if they attack very, sen very sensitive locations, then they become very effective. So, yeah, you want to become immune against them, doing to do the, do, trying to do the maximum damage to your team. Next, we have the flame troopers. They can be very devastating if used right, easily killing 10 to 20 soldiers with the first flame trooper and then the second comes out and kills even more people. So, how do you defend against them? Here's the thing, there are a couple of strategies and the most important thing to understand is that very often, if the enemy player is very good, you can't do much, he will cause damage. So, your task is now to limit the damage and minimize it as much as, much as possible. The easiest way to, defeat, uh, to defend against flame troopers is to expect remotely where they're coming from and either hold an angle just take your basic bolt action rifle, pre-aim at an angle and just await him. And when you see him come around the corner, just one tap him and he's dead. Same thing you can do with many things like machine guns and so on. This is the best thing to expect them. Second best thing is 
to build a bunch of barbed wires to slow them down. So flame troopers who are not mobile, who can't run around your closed room and, sp and spray everyone with fire, much less dangerous. Also spamming sandbags, because sandbags, guess what, protect you against fire. <laughs> and a random, a random barbed wire in a tight corridor and then a bunch of sandbags in your big room where your whole team is, is sitting and defending an objective can make flame troopers barely noticeable in terms of damage. So yeah, the, these defensive measures are very great. Now, what happens if the if this fails and the flame trooper still comes in? Well, then while you're burning, whip out your grenades and just since you won't see the flame trooper most of the time because he's, if he's smart, he's running around and everything's burning and you can't see anything. Just hold it in your hand and start cooking it. When you actually finally die after some seconds, it will explode and very likely it will deal damage to the enemy flamethrower. Even if he gets down, that's enough because since everything's burning, he's gonna die eventually from the fire, even despite his extreme fire immunity that the class intrinsically get. Another, well, optimally for that, obviously, are uh, impact grenades because if you die, it instantly explodes and the chance is quite high that the flame trooper will be close to you in this moment because when he starts spraying you, he will be still a little bit away from you and when you start burning, you whip out your grenade and he comes approaching to you and well, then he, you will perfectly get him with the grenade. But the absolutely best single weapon against flame troopers are grenade launchers because they give you an advantage in terms of distance. Even if you're medium good with aiming grenade launchers, you will be able to kill any flame trooper in this game before he can reach you with his flames. And even if his whole squad is rushing in, even if two flame troopers are rushing in, you can easily blow them up with a grenade launcher. And even if you're burning, you can still, while you're burning and while he's attacking you and spraying a fire, still just aim remotely in the area where he might be on the ground with your grenade launcher and blow him up. So yeah, grenade launchers are the absolute king and most easy to use against flame troopers. So absolutely, absolutely recommended. Overall, the best strategies against flame troopers are grenade launchers and preparation of the objective with barbed wires and sandbags. Everything else requires lots of variables and requires you to do many things right. But these two things are very easy to do and work all of the time. Next we get tanks. Yes, everyone's favorite item to complain about in this infantry centered game. Why are tanks so annoying? Well, most of the time they are not because if a tank is close to you and you have a TNT, well, you can just blow him up. That's very simple. Every tank in the game, even the good version of the King Tiger in Berlin, easily dies from a TNT pack thrown underneath it or on the weak parts on top or the sides. And every other tank, you don't even need to aim to specific areas, they just explode. Though, tanks, when they are far away, especially in grey zone areas, this is where the pain begins and usually stays for 20 minutes over the whole game. So how do we deal with these types of tanks? One thing is, if you have an anti-tank rifle, and you know very well where the weak spots of the tanks are, you can start shelling them. Because anti-tank rifles basically don't have any bullet drop-off, you can just aim across the whole, literally the whole map, and hit targets. Now, even weak anti-tank rifles, if the enemy tank is even remotely penetrable on some areas, keep in mind the penetration power drops on distance, but some areas might be very weak, so you can still snipe through them. If, as long as you find these areas, and you can find them by either A, logically thinking that, oh, the frontal part of a tank is the most well armored, but if it has a machine gun port in the front, this is where it's, for a couple square centimeters or inches, very thin, and this is where you can penetrate. And there's definitely a machine gunner sitting behind, so you can already kill one crew member, yeah? So this is how you can do it. Or if you just shoot a tank randomly, you will see on the little damage map for the tank where it has, where it might have its weak spots or where it has its ammunition depots and then you can try to shoot them there. Keep in mind though, penetrating tanks from the front, if they're camping in the gray zone, very hard to actually accomplish due to the drop-off of penetration. So you want to 
possibly flank them because killing tanks from the weak side armor parts very easily. Also, the area where the tracks are of a tank also usually very easy to penetrate. So this is one thing. The next best thing obviously is taking an engineer squad or anti-tank gunner squad, build an anti-tank gun and start shelling a tank with that. With the updated power of these anti-tank guns, this is actually a very viable strategy. Works much better, much much better than anti-tank rifles because anti-tank guns can actually penetrate tanks very reliably. Even most tanks will explode from one hit. So this is very good. Another thing is, well, using your own tank, but this is not that good because you it's only it only works if your tank is actually capable of penetrating the enemy tank. So you have to have a very good cannon. If you don't have a very good cannon and you take your own tank, congratulations, you just lost time and respawn tickets because he's gonna well he's gonna slap you and you won't damage him. So it is not that good. Much better though are planes. The thing with planes is even some of the weakest bombs in the game can blow up possibly even the strongest tanks in the game. So this means basically every configuration of your plane and enemy tank you will be able to kill the enemy tank with your plane. So this is also the natural counter to tanks. Planes with bombs very effective and if it's if it's the Japanese or American tanks with an open top Congratulations, it becomes even more ridiculous because now you can just shoot them with your machine guns if you drop 90 degrees from the top while flying the plane and shooting it. So yeah, planes are the best counter to these tanks. And another thing is, if everything fails, is to approach the game in a different way when it comes to movement. If you see an enemy graze on tank camping, the maps in Enlisted are designed with a little bit of intelligence, at least. So this means that there, there are no maps where Grays on Tank can just easily dominate the whole game. That doesn't exist in Enlisted. Grays on Tanks can only dominate certain areas of a map, but, but not the whole map. Even the worst contender or offender, uh, when it comes to D-Day, for example, if you have a tiger sitting on the hills and shelling you down on the beach, while your burger army is trying to approach the bunkers. Guess what? He can control possibly 30-40% of the beach, which is already oppressively overpowered. But in that case, if you see we can't kill this tank, nothing works. Alright, just go flank very hard. Know that it will take possibly one minute of running, but that's okay. Because you, you solve the problem of this tank. Flank very hard, far left, far right. And then build rallies in areas where if you spawn there, the, end, the tank can't shell you. And this is the most important strategy, because all the other strategies depend on power level of weapons, depend on skill or which squads you might have equipped. But building a flanking rally to just avoid getting shelled by the enemy Grayzone tank, this is what works extremely well. And the best thing is, the enemy tank can't do much about it, because the best gray zone tank positions well, they require quite a time to get there. And no tank noob sitting in a grey zone will want to leave his position. And then he will just sit there for three more minutes, being confused about where have all the enemies gone. Yeah, this is how you this is the best counter to the strategy. Related to the tank problem is the plane problem. And this problem isn't actually a big one. Main reason for that is that planes have significantly less damage output compared to tanks. The worst player in the game can let you, can just take a tank, get in a randomly good position and start HE shelling enemies, groups of enemies, spawning enemies and he can get easily 50 kills in 2 minutes. This is literally not hard to do, almost every tank in the game, even the weakest can do it and it's very effective. Planes though, they can't do that. <laughs> First of all, in order to shoot, you can only drop one load with most planes. And then you have to fly back. And this takes forever. So the damage output is significantly reduced. Also, planes require some skill. And even if you're damaged a little bit by some ambitious infantrymen who shot you with their bolt action rifles, if you take a bit of damage in the in the wing, congratulations, you won't be that much faster. You will be struggling with actually flying straight without dropping down between the objective and the resupply point 
And the biggest mistake that pilots do is, if they're damaged and became too slow, still staying in the air, making their, making their turns so slow that their damage output drops even further. So here's the biggest takeaway. If you see that an enemy plane isn't doing significant damage, just ignore it. Because this is one player less on the enemy side that can play infantry and actually play objectives. The biggest skill, and I, I'm very sure I forgot about it, but I'm very sure Sun Tzu wrote something similar. The biggest skill is to just know when to react and when not to react. And playing players, I can assure you, not worthy reacting to. <laughs> Almost never. Even, even P-47s in Normandy, very often, do the trick by the way. You don't even need to believe me, just do the test. Play a game of Normandy as Germans, where the enemies have a P-47. And just let it stay in the air, don't kill it. He can get 200 kills. He can get 200 kills in 30 minutes. You still win the game. <laughs> you still win the game with your best player having only 100 kills. Because, as you will see, planes, even if the numbers look good, the impact on the game is just not, not, not that big. I won't go into detail because I could talk for 30 minutes why that is so, but just believe me. Now, once you acquire the big strategy of not reacting to things that you don't need to react to, like planes in this case, sometimes you still want to react to, well, here are the things. The best countermeasure to planes is your own play, plane. Because shooting them down from the ground is very hard. First of all, you can use any infantryman shooting them down. You can use bolt action, sniper rifles, anti-tank rifles. What, check out my shorts. Check them out, especially on Instagram, where I have some very sexy thumbnails, because YouTube doesn't let you make your own thumbnails for shorts for a reason no one knows. And then you will see, I've literally shot down, or some of my fans shot down, and I took their, uh, their shorts. You can shoot down planes with everything, but it's very hard and it doesn't always work. But taking a random plane makes shooting it down very easy. Especially if you don't expect to survive for too long yourself. You just, you just take any plane, you spawn with any plane. As long as it has heavy machine guns, or even auto cannons, auto cannons is everything caliber 20mm or higher, it becomes easy. It becomes very easy. Normal machine guns of uh, under 8mm caliber, they can be very bad, so don't expect to shoot on anything with those, but everything starting with 13mm, like 12.8mm, like HMGs, is good enough to shred every plane in the game. So yeah, your own planes are great, anti-air guns aren't dead, so flux aren't dead good, because they are ridiculously nerfed and don't work properly in the game, even if they would work properly, they still wouldn't work that well. So yeah, be unle unless the game buffs anti-air guns significantly, they're not that effective. So yeah, your best countermeasure is, is just A, ignoring the plane, and once again, change your movement. For example, don't let your rally points be in an open field that the enemy plane constantly bombs. Build your rally points in some hidden buildings, or build it next to a wall, and build one or two layers of sandbags around the rally point, and now no bombs are gonna damage your rally point. So this is helpful. Also, spread out your rally points so they flank the objective, so the enemy bomber can't just constantly bomb your gray zone. Because if you have five rally points, okay, what is he gonna bomb? He's gonna, he's gonna bomb only one point on the map, but your soldiers can be anywhere on the map, you see? So rally points, once again, are extremely strong against planes. And if you see enemy planes flying low or slow, congratulations, start spraying them with whatever weapon you have, literally whatever weapon you have. If you aim a little bit intelligently with a bit of training and practice, you will be able to deal good damage to the enemy planes. And even hurting its engine means 30 or 60 seconds later the plane is gonna drop down. Hurting one wing or hurting the back side of the plane is basically instant death because the plane becomes uncontrollable. And now we come to the point that gives all the American players in Normandy PTSD, the machine gun nests. Now machine gun nests coming in two iterations, normal machine guns and heavy machine guns, they are, well, first of all they are quite rare, because most players don't even build them. 
my approach to the game is very basically close to the real life approach of the British and the German army. You want to make infantry combat based around machine guns. So whenever I play, the first thing I do is I try to find a good machine gun nest position, build it and then dominate the game. And if the enemy doesn't do anything, congratulations, you win, because this machine gun nest, especially on defensive maps, is absolutely overwhelming. Or if the enemy starts reacting to it, doesn't matter, I still got 10 kills or so, and I still have half of my squad alive. And he destroys it, I just built a new one, I just started taking with infantry. So this is the biggest power that comes from machine gun nests. They are only oppressive if they are placed very well. But if they are placed very well, obviously they, they look at this, uh, quite a good area where enemies are coming from. But this also means that it's quite visible. So you but also even if it's well hidden behind a bush, for example, or inside of a dark little house, like it's constantly the case in Moscow, you still see the bullets flying. You still see the bullets flying through the around the battlefield and then you can always deduce and know where exactly a machine gunner might be. Now here's the thing, how do you outplay it? First of all, any sniper, any sniper rifle in the game just snipe the dude sitting on the machine gun nest. Important, the first shot always should kill the soldier, not the machine gun itself, because most of the time the machine gun itself will take around three shots to kill it. So you always want to kill the soldier mounting it. And the best thing is, if you kill the soldier using the machine gun, the next so soldier in the squad is going to take it, take the position, then you snipe him again. And then, depending on the depending on the brain power of the enemy player, you will possibly even kill his whole squad. This is one thing. The other thing is anti-tank rifles, absolutely great for that. Of course, you can use a Panzerfaust too, but yeah, it's very hard to aim with them. But an anti-tank rifle, just shoot at the machine gun, it will be e instantly destroyed. Instantly destroyed, as it should be. The best thing possibly against machine gun nests are tanks, because any type of high explosive ammunition, even in the weakest tanks of the game, will instantly blow up the machine gun and everyone around it. Because since you're shooting at a target, it's like shooting at soldiers, the, the high explosive ammunition will have its maximum spherical area of damage. So yeah, this is the best thing, the absolutely best thing. And other things like flanking the machine gun, as was done in real life, because the, usually the only thing in real life that could save you from machine gun is flanking it. By, so you get out of the area where you get instantly destroyed. You just flank it and then attack it from the side. And yeah, so machine guns are, if you, if they, unlike planes, you can't ignore them because a well-placed machine gun nest can completely dominate, especially if you're the attacker and the machine gun player as the defender. So you have to react to it. But yeah, oh, but another thing, by the way, is you can build your own machine gun also. You can hold your whole machine gun or your own anti-tank gun and just outplay him this way. Of course, they can also be bombed because they can be marked and you can see them from the sky. But yeah, you won't take a, spe you won't take a plane specifically for that purpose. But if you already dropped your main load or if you don't have any better target, sure, you can bomb a machine gun. Because most of the time there's this whole squad somewhere around it and then you kill the whole squad by that. Next, we have the general category of full auto weapons. So primarily SMGs, but also machine guns and also some full auto stuff like FG-42s, Fedorovs and so on. These types of weapons annoy many people, especially new people, if they start playing the game and only have access to bolt actions and only weak full auto weapons, but then they see an enemy approaching with a 100 bullet American machine gun. Yes, how do you counter that? Very simple. You take a look at what are the strengths and weaknesses of full auto weapons. In case of SMGs, they are only effective at short range. If it's an assault rifle, also medium range, but even long range it becomes bad. Now here's the thing. The best counter is pre-aiming with your bolt action, because even if he's close, you already expect him coming from a certain point, and then you aim in this direction, and when you see him coming, you instantly shoot him. Keep in mind, the, the thing that makes Enlisted extremely good as a game is, or the best thing about the game is, 
that every beginner has access to bolt actions and bolt actions if you can play well with them are one of the strongest things in the game absolutely strongest thing in the game you, it, it's very taxing on your mind because you have to constantly focus on aiming well unlike the full auto weapons we're complaining about right now but if you do this they are extremely strong so yeah keep in mind bolt actions even on short range are gonna one shot any smg and most even assault rifle weapons assault rifle type weapons even semi-auto rifles that have a full auto mode depending on how healthy you are and how well he hits you you can still survive one shot so even if he starts firing getting one single land on him with your bolt action will gonna kill him another thing is if the distance is medium then you completely dominate with your bolt actions because then most SMGs drop from being very good to medium to okay at best. Some SMGs become completely bad. For example, the SIG 920 for the Japanese is really good at short range, but just bad at mid range. And on long range, you can completely forget it. So, bolt actions dom start dominate, dominating even harder. And on mid range, you can even just stand there, get sprayed by three different enemies. Because A, they won't hit you properly, and B, they will need like four or five hits until you die. So in this time, you can easily bow them. So you don't need, you don't even need to stress yourself if you know the distance is large, because you can afford taking some hits. If it's an enemy machine gun, then it's worse because he's got much higher damage even on mid range. But even then, he needs to hit you two times. And he needs to be a good player, because if he's spraying his machine gun, he will very likely not hit you. So if he's, if he's disciplined and, do, and does two to three bullet bursts, yeah, then it's dangerous. But still, it's easier to hit and target far away with a bolt action than a machine gun. So bolt actions are literally your best friend if, you're, if you lack very good equipment, or you just overpower him with better equipment. So if he's got an SMG on short range, just use a faster firing SMG for example if the enemy in if you're playing against Soviets and the enemy has PPSHs a Kirali on short range is actually better because the damage is significantly higher and the bullets the cadence the fire rate is around it's okay around the same so this works if the enemy has an assault rifle but it's slow shooting a fast fire rate SMG can also give you an advantage on short range or the best thing actually on short range, ironically, are machine guns. Because machine guns on short range deal extreme damage. And they also have a very far high fire rate for most of the machine guns in the game. So if an enemy group comes too close to you, just start spraying them. You don't even need to aim because on short range, well, every, every bullet is going to hit. So yeah, machine guns are also very strong on short range. You see, it it's... If you're fighting against full auto spam, it's either a question of how to overpower them with better things or how to be strategic with bolt actions. Another thing is grenade launchers. Because on medium range and even on short range, which is the best area for full auto weapons, a grenade launcher also works. And even if he's super close to you that you die, it doesn't matter. You die with your own by your own grenade, but he's also dying. And most likely his whole squad or many soldiers are dying. So yeah. But also flamethrowers, because if they if they if they do the short range game to profit from their weapons, yeah, flamethrowers are obviously better. <laughs> flamethrowers are obviously even better. Basically everything, the big takeaway here is basically everything counters full auto weapons if you if you play tight, if you aim well and if you think ahead. Now we come to every new player's most favorite thing to complain about, the snipers. Now, snipers are basically like planes when it comes to how you deal with them, but they're even easier to deal with. Here's the thing. Snipers, most players who, who are sniping in this game have abysmal kill rates. This means you can have an enemy squad, an enemy, a whole enemy player squad, sit in the background and snipe non-stop and it's very likely his team is going to lose because of that because they have one player less who actually does some significant thing that impacts the game so the best strategy is 
not just ig ignoring the snipers, but but hoping the enemy team has as many snipers as possible. Because if you see, for example, in your own team, you have three sniper players. Yes, you know what it means. Most likely, you're gonna lose. <laughs> so yeah, here that's the thing. Snipers aren't that good the way most people play them. It's very rare that snipers are actually useful. I'm also gonna upload a sniping video soon. Uh, soon means around one month. Well, it's not that soon, but it's sooner than the Dark Flow Gaijin version of soon. So yeah, it's okay. Here's the thing. If an enemy sniper actually manages to be good, do the following. First of all, you don't want to have rally, rally points in open fields where snipers can easily see them. So building just one sandbag is already good. Then, snipers, if you see, a, if a sniper is visible in his position, you can just start spraying him with either machine guns or a random bolt action will easily kill him. So that's not a problem. If a sniper is actually good, he's in a hiding position. Hiding position usually means in a little house or room or whatever. In that case, if you have a tank, it's perfect. Because I constantly see snipers being clustered together. And some snipers even, it's like a two or three stack, oftentimes console players. And they, they are, for example, in Stalingrad sitting on the third floor and when I take a tank and shoot a high explosive shell into this room I get like 10 kills so two <laughs> complete healthy sniper squads or maybe even three squads and you always get strategic destructions too so they built a bunch of ammo boxes expecting to camp in this room for the next <laughs> 30 minutes yes this is the thing the best thing about against snipers are tanks because snipers can't possibly deal with tanks. They just can't. They just can't. Theoretically, yes, but 99% they won't. So if you see a sniper that's absolutely problematic or just annoys the hell out of you, or if you're already in a tank, make sure you ex explode the sniper position and it's a complete loss for the enemy team because they lose just a whole squad and you just lost one single shot. So yeah, snipers who, do, who are doing it wrong, they're easily killable. Snipers who are doing it very safely, well, they're easily destroyable by tanks. Or any bolt action also does the trick. Because even if a sniper is very far away, any bolt action in the game will do enough damage to kill him with one or two hits. But since most snipers try to hide and only expose their heads, you will automatically headshot them if you hit them and then you kill him 100% with one shot. So yeah, snipers aren't that much of a problem. They are more a problem to their own teams than to the enemy. But if one becomes annoying, too annoying, tanks are by far the best solution for that. Or if you want to have extra fun, you can build an anti tank gun, also shell them. Or you can build a machine gun nest. Though, keep in mind, since the sniper is going to see you building them, that's usually too slow. So, yep. Ah, by the way, if it's mid range. And if, there's, if a sniper is hiding mid-range somewhere, grenade launcher is also extremely good. Because keep in mind, snipers keep their whole squad usually close to the main player's uh, controlled soldier. Who's actually shooting and the others are sitting in the back, uh, couple meters around him. So anything that creates explosions usually takes out the whole squad instantly. Let's go to an extra spicy point. What happens if your enemy team mines your rally points? Meaning... An enemy soldier runs around your area or wherever you drop the rally and drops an anti-personal mine next to it. And then your squad spawns and you spawn and your soldiers instantly trigger the mine and everyone's dead. Yep, this is an extremely good strategy and people need to stop complaining about it because A, whenever this happens, the team who built the rally is at fault because they failed at defending their rally point. This is a very viable, also historically accurate strategy, because guess what? Rally points are basically the headquarters of your army. They are like the logistical equivalent, because nothing else in the game simulates something like a headquarter. Now, what do armies constantly try to do in battle? They try to blow up the enemy headquarter, because without the headquarter, it doesn't matter how many soldiers they have on the field, the soldiers won't do anything. Because most soldiers are like a bunch of 
insects. They don't know what to do unless they're being told to do what to, uh, to Because even if you have some very smart, good soldiers, some experienced soldiers, they don't have any information about the battlefield. They don't have any flow of information with the possibly command, central command in their nation's capital. And most importantly, they don't have any logistics. Because soldiers need a constant stream of resources, otherwise they starve. <laughs> they, they don't have water, they don't have weapons and so on. So headquarters are absolutely crucial. And in real life, everyone tries to blow up the enemy headquarter. And since headquarters usually are well defended or well hidden in real life, it becomes very hard. You can't just drive a whole army next to an enemy headquarter and blow it up. You have to do some sabotage miss missions. You have to plant some mines or some explosives in the enemy headquarter and then blow it up. Or you have to do some special secret commando missions. So you see, this is perfectly simulated. The whole situation and scenario is perfectly simulated with rally points. If you don't control your headquarter, if you don't protect it, the enemy can infiltrate it and blow it up. Or plant some secret explosives like mines and then you lose the whole headquarters and a bunch of soldiers. So this is a very good feature of the game. And people who complain about it, they just need to stop complaining and listen very well right now. Because here's what you do. The easiest way to defend against this is whenever you build your rally point, you drop your own anti-personal mine next to the ready point because now if the enemy soldier is getting close to your ready point trying to put his own mine on it he's gonna trigger your mine and he's gonna die this is where you use your ready point but this is free because you would have lost it anyway from the enemy mine but your team doesn't lose a whole squad spawning and you also kill the enemy soldier yep so this is the trick this is the trick you want to do. This is the simplest trick. By the way, the counter trick to that is whenever you approach a rally point, you well, you look very closely to the ground to see that you don't that you find a possible mine and you don't trigger it. And yeah, then you're immune against this. But most players don't even think about it, so you're very sure about it. Yeah, that's the one thing. Another thing is, always hide your rally points in some good areas. There are lots of areas with tall grass. There are lots of areas with, with walls. The best thing is, you have a wall, just a flat wall. You build a rally point next to it. You build one single sandbag that perfectly, like a half elliptically, protects the rally point. And then it already becomes very hard to shoot your rally point. And very often it will become, well, very often players trying to drop mines will miss the rally point. <laughs> they will miss the rally point because the mine drops too close or on top of the sandbag. And then when your squad spawns on the rally point, only some soldiers die, not all of them. Sometimes even the rally point survives. So yeah, hiding your rally points, building a little bit of sandbags around it. And especially build, dropping your own anti-personal mines works wonders. But the best defense is, once again, having many rally points because even if you lose one, doesn't matter, you still have more. This strategy is only painful if you are lacking rally points. And now, oh no, our only rally point is gone. What are we going to do? Well, first of all, we stop being a retard team and build multiple rally points, not only one. <laughs> and secondly, defending rally points is also smart. You, your team always should have the information about enemies approaching your, your, your backlines. Because your rally points obviously almost always won't be next to the enemy gray zone, but around your gray zone. So if enemy troops manage to infiltrate your gray zone, guess what? Something went wrong. You didn't defend your front line properly. So always make sure you know what's going on in the battlefield and where enemies are moving, which also requires information flow, either by communicating on Discord or just typing it in the chat so your team knows it. Enemies are flanking far right. Oh, now everyone knows our ready points on the right side, are, right side aren't safe anymore. I already mentioned a couple of times that grenade launchers are the solution to many problems. But what is the solution to grenade launchers? Well, here's the thing. What are the strengths of grenade launchers? Because every time you analyze something, always see what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses. And then the answer is coming by itself. The strengths of grenade launchers are that... 
your enemies are approaching with a group or you're approaching the enemy defenders and they're clustered together many soldiers next to each other and you just shoot one rifle a grenade into them and they all die so the first thing is you want to spread out or if you're close together you want to make sure you see an enemy soldier approaching with a grenade launcher also enemy grenade launchers they're easy to identify because it's a long rifle and it has some additional long thick thing on front of it so you you can identify them even from further away so you always can see all right this is a grenade launcher soldier similar to how easy it is to identify flamethrowers by by seeing a the flamethrower in their hand and b the big tank on their back and when you don't see this you will inevitably see the flame in front of it so yeah grenade launchers easy to spot Whenever you see a grenade launcher, you want to spread out or you want to, preferably, you don't want to spread out because there won't be enough time once you see him. You want to expect him and be already spread out. And if you're a defender, make sure you just don't sit around on the objective. Defenders who spawn on an objective and don't change their position instantly are doing it wrong. Now, think a little bit about it. In real life, if you defend a point, if you defend a bunker, do you have 50 soldiers clustered together in this bunker, waiting to be blown up? Of course not. Like, what the fuck is this? But players in the list do exactly this. They spawn in those little French houses in Normandy, with 20 soldiers in one room, where usually a peasant family would only put two people maximum in. And then they complain about that they got grenade launched. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, so don't just don't stack up together like a bunch of noobs. Spread out. And if you don't know where to spread, oh, this bunker is too small. I can't find room. Yes, you counter attack. There's absolutely no reason to sit and wait for enemies. Always be mobile, always counter attack, always try to flank. There's always an area to move and be smart. Yeah? Also keep in mind. The biggest resource in this game is time. And not moving is literally wasting time in almost all cases. So you always want to move around, move around the area and do something. So yeah, this is one thing. The other thing is your own grenade launchers are the best countermeasure to grenade launchers. Because grenade launchers, they don't require too much aim. So people can very quickly shoot in the general direction of something and hit. So unlike literally any other weapon, uh, possibly also flamethrowers, the enemy will react very quickly, even if it's a bad player. But the biggest danger comes when the player with grenade launchers is actually good and fast, because then he will be lightning fast. Look at any of my full games where I use grenade launchers. Most of the time I don't even aim, because what you can do is you can just start moving your weapon in the direction where you want to shoot, and then click earlier before you reach it. Because the, I noticed the animation of moving a rifle, especially grenade launchers, is slower than the game actually calculates the movement. So you can start moving it, instantly click, and the shot will be there where you wanted it to be before the animation on the screen reaches it. And then you can instantly start reloading. In this way, in this way you, you can do some insanely high fire rates with your grenade launchers. And enemies won't have any chances with them. So yeah. Grenade launchers, your grenade launchers in your own hands are also very good because no matter how fast the enemy is, you don't need to hit him perfectly, you just shoot anywhere on the ground next to the to the enemy soldier and you're gonna kill him. Flamethrowers and Fury and all the full auto weapons are really good if he's if he's short, but the problem if he's close range. But the problem is you always want to prevent the enemy grenade launcher to get too close. Because most players only use this weapon on close-up, so try to snipe him or bolt action him from further away. And if it's a good, this is the thing, if the grenade launcher soldier player is really good, it's similar to flamethrowers, the damage will always be done. You can't prevent it, he will always do some attacking and kill possibly 10 soldiers. Yes, just, yeah, just know that this is a fact. And yeah, counter playing is possible. But the get best countermeasure here is spreading out and not being clustered up together because anything else will reliably lead to, to losses that you can't avoid. Now, what do we do against grenades though? Well, here's the thing. There are type, different types of grenades. 
and I did some very helpful grenade guide. I absolutely recommend watching it. Also, many other things I know I mentioned in this video. Also, I did guides about it. Also, very recommendable to watch. For example, the bombing guide for planes or the tanking guide. The tanking guide came out a bit more boring than expected because I, I just pushed it full of information. But it's absolutely worth it because you will know everything you need to know about tanks. And here's the thing. Grenades come in different iterations. Most of them are so weak, it's not even worth talking about it, but we still quickly will. F small grenades, well, if you play against a very strategically dispositioned enemy team that does some smart small grenading, yeah, well, they, then they can do some flanks, they can do some some hiding or whatever. If they're e extra smart, they just throw a small grenade start building a machine gun nest on top of inside of it or an anti-tank gun and then suddenly there's gonna <laughs> there's gonna be lots of damage but you know what i've never seen this in my whole one and a half years playing enlisted someone actually using small grenades to hide them building some dangerous stuff this never happens what usually happens is they throw a bunch of smoke try to flank you but you still see them through the smoke because <laughs> because they <laughs> messed up so this doesn't matter. What about phosphor grenades? Well, they got nerfed so hard. They're not dangerous anymore. Also, you always have time to run away. Same thing goes for molo molotovs. They're also quite slow. Because you have one and a half seconds to run away once you, once you are surrounded by flames. Also, jumping into water. Water means not a little puddle, but actually a river. Or a lake, you jump with your whole soldier in the water, get out, and now you're immune against fire for 30 seconds. This works, but usual, as also against grenade launchers, spreading out your soldiers the best thing. A grenade that only kills two soldiers usually is a bad trade, because cooking a grenade perfectly takes 5 seconds. While you do this, you can't do anything else. You can't even switch your weapon, because then you drop your grenade, and yeah... <laughs> In worst case, you drop it too close to you. So, cooking a grenade, using grenades effectively, is quite a big time investment. If your enemies are engaging you and pushing you and pressuring you with any types of weapons in the meantime, you won't have time to use grenades. So, this is the first countermeasure. A, spread out, but also constantly put pressure on your enemies by sh constantly shooting at them. This way, they won't have time to use grenades. There's just no time during a battle fight, during a gunfight, to, to to whip out grenades and throw them. Especially not cooking them, especially not aiming well with them. This is the one thing. The other thing is, shoot enemies at mid to long range. Because grenades, unlike all the other possibly dangerous weapons, even like grenade launchers, grenades have much less effective range. Yes, you can use the yellow perk that gives you additional range. And yes, you can use anti tank gunners who come with additional range. But guess what? How It's very hard to aim. Also, instead of learning how to aim grenades long range, I'd rather learn how to aim with grenade launchers long range, because this is much more reliable. So yeah, but if someone there out there actually takes the time to learn how to throw grenades long range, can be very dangerous, but once again, any normal bolt action deals with grenade throwers and on short range pressuring enemies engaging them in intense firefights make sure they can't throw grenades this is literally all there is to countering grenades it's very simple and with the last two points we reach the maximum spicy topics first of all we have the sweaty nerd stacks meaning players playing together communicating together on discord for example and Staking up together in Enlisted, because you can create a group of up to four players. I also made a video about how to do that and how to sync up with or against other people. And here's the thing. Many people hate playing against stacks, because they are inherently unfair if you're playing alone. And yeah, that's true. Though, first of all, not every stack is dangerous or even good. Because if I see exactly eight console players in the enemy team i know oh yes this is 90 percent 
two four stacks of 12 year old console players <laughs> yeah 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 there's no need to complain about it are you afraid of them of course not because you or if it's exactly four console players console people are usually stacking up more often than pc players so and these stacks aren't really dangerous same thing goes for pc players there are lots of pc players there are even clans for pc players who are doing stacking and they are worse than average players yes that actually exists so don't be afraid because you expect enemies to have stacks now how do you identify enemy stacks well some of them use the same name decorators or some of them even use the same or very similar names now this is one thing and the other thing is if you see a bunch of players who are in the top four and they have significantly more points than others also quite quite likely that they are four stack or if you see the enemy team having perfect coordination and this is where it gets actually dangerous and difficult to defeat and this is what most people actually refer as sweaty four stacks if you see if you're a defender and the enemy attackers are hardcore steamrolling you with perfect coordination for example in normandy if the enemies take one tank in the beginning that comp instantly shells your bunkers and in the same time you're getting your gray zone is getting shelled with a plane with bombs or even p47 rockets and then in the same time you have two enemy rally points up because you can see in the battle points that two players are starting amassing huge amounts of engineer points or not huge amounts but a constant increase always by one engineer point and then 20 seconds later you see two whole squads possibly even riflemen attacking you yeah that look like, that looks like a four stack and if this if the same procedure goes on and in the second point right after you lost this first point you see one or two <laughs> you see one or two paratroopers dropping on the next point while your defending army is still on the previous point that you just lost this is also very likely a stack because in order to to execute a strategy you have to be very well coordinated and you constantly have to know what's going on because normal uncoordinated players can try to do the same thing but it likely will not work against good teams because try to do it all of what i said in this video before you can you know all the countermeasures to, to measures to these strategies strategies become oppressively strong if they are coordinated well it's called in real life combined arms warfare you harmonize for example world war ii as it was invented you harmonize tanks and planes and infantry for example you harmonize planes and tanks because now you have perfect information with your reconnaissance planes now whenever there are a bunch of anti-tank guns you can blow them up with your planes and then you can start using your tanks to blow up everything else and in case there's some random dudes hiding somewhere or there's some traps or little trenches or mines for that you have the infantry to protect your tanks if you combine these three weapon types you become undefeatable if you if you do the strategy if you do the harmonization of their attack perfectly and this is exactly why four stacks can be very dangerous if the players know what they're doing their harmonization and coordination will completely overwhelm you and can't do anything against it so yeah what can you do against it actually the answer is not that much because they literally have all the advantages on their sides yeah everything they everything a player could do well they obviously are doing already well so the only thing you can do is you can either play in a stack yourself alone or it doesn't need to be a four stack but a two stack can already be enough what absolutely helps is always having rallies and code and start chatting with your team a couple of times what i do is always give them short orders like or in infos like enemies flanking left enemies flanking right tank on the gray zone left ta tank on the center of the map stuff like that and always remind people to build rallies every single point because once again if your team even if your team is playing against a bunch of sweaty stack lords if your team is building 10 rally points it's almost impossible to lose due to the maths and logistics enlisted if you have 10 rally points if you're a defender you're gonna have so much so much spawning you're gonna be whenever you die for every squad that they manage to kill you will have two squads approaching the objective to defend it instantly again 
it literally becomes impossible to lose. So the overall strongest strategy in the game is to have 10 rally points. <laughs> this is what you can do. And this means tell your monkey teammates to build rallies constantly. You can defeat sweat stacks by just having many rallies, especially more rally points than the enemies. Now this is the best hope for you and this is also the strategy that works the best. Absolutely, absolutely. By the way, when I play with new players or weak players or whatever, I tell them it doesn't matter how you play, as long as you're a nice player, everything's fine. The only thing you need to do is build rallies. Always have a rally point active. That's the only thing you have to do as an enlisted player to not be a monkey. And then everything's okay. And they, it doesn't matter if they have a, if they have the worst kill death ratio ever. It doesn't matter if they are the tenth player in the team. As long as they had a rally point that spawned especially the better players in the team and help them to be constantly engaged, they already contributed much more to the game than most players in the list will ever do. This one thing. Another thing you can do is, if you see, alright, what is exactly the problem and what does your team need? If your team needs more damage dealers, just start, try to take a tank and start dealing damage. Or if you see the enemies are perfectly attacking in waves, they're flooding, because they are, they are coordinated, they are attacking your objective with three squads instantly, you know, alright, I need grenade launchers or flamethrowers, because it, that's the only way to completely kill them. Or if they constantly use power troopers, well, guess what? If you, or if you see, oh, we're losing this point, and in, in five seconds we will have lost it, and then I can expect them in 15 seconds to already parachute to the next point, you can you can just self-delete your soldiers that are remaining on this current point or that are running around everywhere and make sure you spawn with new soldiers on the new point that you will have to defend in a couple of seconds. This way they can't surprise you. This way you will already be there. That's one thing. Another thing is, if, they, if you, once again, if you're defending, make sure you drop a bunch of anti-tank mines on the roads where you expect enemy tanks because this is very helpful. And also drop a bunch of anti-personal mines because Power troopers, most of the time, as I said, not that effective because there are not that many soldiers. If you have, like, let's say, three anti-personal mines on the objective that they want to capture, this can be enough to, to reduce the whole squad to one soldier left. And one soldier capturing isn't dangerous. There are also some other little strategies. By the way, if you just look through every weapon class that I explained in this video and you use the countermeasures, you will be so good and strong at playing the game that you can defeat any force stack by just playing better than them. This is another thing, just play better than them. But keep in mind, ready points are the most important thing always. So you want to always have ready points and play better. The last thing that works against sweat stacks is to start doing some psychological warfare and trigger those nerds. Yes, because most nerds are easily triggered because they're not used to getting booty clapped. Especially if they think, oh, it's four, we're in a force stack. You're gonna crush everyone here? Nope. When I, mean, I, I play almost all, and most of the games since a couple of months I play alone because I don't have time to sing up with other people. And I constantly see four stacks and I constantly destroy them. And it's much more fun because I know that <laughs> they are raging in their basements. And here's how you do it. You can, if you see a specific member of the enemy four stack, just start targeting him. Obviously, don't target him in a way that you completely start playing bad and and don't take care of anything else that's important to do. But still, let's say you see the enemy has a pilot in the force stack and the pilot is constantly doing bullshit. Well, take your plane and shoot him down. Constantly shoot him down. Many players will get triggered and annoyed and butthurt about constantly dying. <laughs> and start playing bad. Many of them are even rage quitting. Yeah, <laughs> Many of them are even rage quitting. Another thing is anti-tank mines also very annoying for for low self-esteem sweat lords and once they drive I constantly see players once they drive over the second anti-tank mine they quit the game. <laughs> yes, especially in Normandy very easy to do if you're playing def defense as Germans very easy to do. Also, try to do stuff like... Try to use the weapons that people perceive as most annoying. 
use grenade launch. Whenever I see an enemy team and they annoy the hell out of me, what I do is I constantly I start using only grenade launchers. Not only because they're very effective and the strongest weapon type overall, but they are also very annoying to enemies. And when I see, alright, the enemies are coming, they prepare their attack very well, they coordinated it. Alright, doesn't matter. I have my rifleman squad with six riflemen, plus three specialists, and every one of them has plus plus one grenades. And I can, I can literally kill easily 100 nerds with this one squad. Easily, if they stay alive. So, I, on, on average, I'm gonna kill 20, 30 dudes with this one squad. And this already triggers most players. Also, flamethrowers, also whenever you see enemies are too fast, don't only flamethrow the enemy soldiers, flamethrow the ground, so they can't properly run through the ground without getting burned. This can slow down enemies, also drop lots of anti-personal mines, as I already said. This can be very effective. And... If the enemies are, if the enemy sweat stack is using too many tanks, possibly pre, possibly anticipate where they will be and have an anti tank gun ready or Panzerfaust and so on, and just target this one tank player because many players who are specialized, uh, like especially the noobs, the play noobs and the tank noobs, if you blow up their favorite toys, they're gonna rage quit. My favorite thing to do is in Normandy is whenever I see enemies using Kellyops, constantly bullying the Kellyops. Constantly, you get extra points for blowing it up with your Focke Wolf rockets. <laughs> yeah, just just give him a taste of his own medicine. And there's there's possibly no player type in this game that's quitting more often than carrier players getting blown up a second time in a row. And the last point, how to deal with in this game, is also quite easily explained. It's how do you deal with bot teams? Well, two fast answers, and then a little bit more detailed one. First of all, everything I said about how to deal with sweaty enemies, you can do the same thing and it will work if you only have bots. Because without the communication part that WC doesn't work with bots, playing just very well and tight, doing everything your team needs and adapting your game style in a complementary way to the enemy game style, this usually works. Also, I made a guide, I made like, it's like a 15 minute game, I think, that's called How to Carry Bot Teams. Yes, there, is, there you see everything you need to see in a fast way, how to win with a team that's basically only containing bots. Because, yeah, showing it is much more helpful than explaining it. And the last thing is, if you have only bots, make sure that you build rallies that are very close and risky. Well, you obviously don't want them to be risky, but close rallies are always risky usually. Here's the thing. If you have bots, bots are actually coded to get to the objective if they're close enough spawning. If your rally point is 70, 60 meters away, bots won't really get to the objective. And even if they start getting there, it will be too slow. But if your rally point is 40 meters next to the objective and you're defending with bots, Congratulations, or even if you're attacking, the bots will instantly go to the objective. And this way, as long as your enemy team isn't too strong, you can win as the only player in your team by always having a very close ready point. This is the most important thing about if you have too many bots. By the way, it can even be better. I'd, I'd actually rather have 9 bots than 9 bad enlisted players. Because the bad enlisted players, no matter where I build my rally, I'm gonna spawn in the gray zone and do some sniping with 10 kills per game. So yeah, I try to have the bots who are mindlessly running to the objective like cannon fodder, but inevitably they're gonna capture because the ready point is so close that the distance to run is slow, it's very low, and there will be always good pressure and whenever I'm spawning and getting in there, it will work. Also, after you finish your ready point that's close to the enemy zone or to the objective, you, since you don't want to interrupt your bots spawning because there will be, yeah, it's only one rally point so they can't spawn all, uh, you will always have to wait, take a vehicle so you don't interrupt the spawning chain and just either blow up enemy tanks with your planes or get a good tank and do maximum damage. Maximum damage does mean not being in a gray zone, but it means blowing up every important target, shelling the objective, 
but also getting closer and closer to the objective so you can park your tank, doesn't matter if you survive or not, and once the tank is blocking the enemy bullets, your own bots can hide there and they will survive and they will be even, it will be even easier for them to capture the point. So this is important, use vehicles after always setting up a perfect rally point ferrising objective, make sure the rally point isn't somewhere on in the third or second floor because then the bots will get stuck. It has to be very easy to leave the object, the ready point and very easy and fast to get to the objective. And then jump into vehicles and make sure you deal as much killing and damage as possible because bots won't be good at it. But the bots will be good at capturing the, 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 the objectives or defending the objectives by just being enough cannon fodder to slow down the enemy. Alright, that's it. Congratulations. Over the last hour you learned literally everything there is to know about this game when it comes to high strategy or to dealing with problems that either your enemies or the game itself can throw at you. Using even parts of what you just learned here will skyrocket your win rate, I guarantee that. Make sure you share this video with all of your nerd friends so everyone can learn this, so all of us profit from having more engaging, more historically accurate smarter and more epic battles when we play. Also, if you haven't done so, like and subscribe so you get even more nerd videos to become an even more dangerous nerd. Until next time, goodbye.